Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to a new video for 1.1 reaction rate. Right in this video, we're going to learn on how to write the integrated rate equation for zero first and second order reaction. Okay, so when we look back on our notes on page 3, okay, we have learned on how to write the rate law. And then for example A until F, from the rate law itself, uh, the order of direction has been given to us, so we can determine the order of direction straight away. But remember, the order of direction is not related to the stoichiometric coefficient and can only be de determined experimentally. Okay, so we have learned previously on how to determine the order of direction. Firstly, uh, is initial rate method. So this value uh, is given to us once uh, the experiment has gone through. So uh, that's why I mentioned here. Can only be determined through experiment. Okay, so uh, for the examples that we have done before, uh, we can see here, for example, for example one here, the order of reaction uh, with respect to NO is 2, and order of reaction with respect to Cl2 is 1. Okay, but right now, what we're going to look at on our notes on page 7, we're going to look when the order of reaction is 0, 1. And two. So when the order of reaction is zero, we will call it a zero order reaction. If the order of reaction is one, we call it as first order reaction. And when the order of reaction is two, we we'll call it as second order reaction. So this is actually a general one, uh, where despite uh, you're gonna learn, uh, you have to memorize the formula for integrated law, integrated rate law, and half life. Okay, so this is only an introduction. Okay, so let's look here. Okay, so for a given equation, uh, for A change to B. So A is our reactant and B is our product lah. Okay, and then we know that to, the, to write down the rate law, rate is equal to K, our rate constant and concentration of A because for this equation, our reactant is only A. A raised to the power of X. X is the order of direction. Okay, so here the first one to the top is the rate law. So when S is equal to zero, so how do we write the how do we write down the rate law here? So the rate law will be K A naught, or you could also write it down as rate is equal to K because when A raised to the power of zero, it will become one. Okay, that is for zero order. For the first order, okay, if x is equal to one, so we're gonna write down rate is equal to K A, and then. When it is a second order reaction, rate will become k a to the power of 2. So that is how we write down the rate law. Okay, next is the reaction. So we're going to look at um, does the concentration affect the reaction rate? Okay, so from here, for the zero order reaction, rate is equal to k. So we know that uh, the rate does not depend on concentration because there's none of the concentration. Even if we put here, concentration raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So actually, for the case of zero order reaction, the rate is independent. So independent uh, of the concentration of the reactant. Okay, how about the first order? Because from here, for the first order, we can see that rate is equal to Ka. So we do have our concentration here. So the rate depends on the concentration. Oops. It depends on the concentration uh, of reactant raised to the first power because it's to the power of 1. So how about if it is a second order? So again, the rate does depend on the concentration. So we're going to write down rate depends on the concentration raised to the or the second order. So second power. Okay. Okay, so let's look here. Okay, so here is this uh, general one. So if you do some calculation. So here you mentioned effect of increasing A. So from here we can see that there is rate 1 and rate 2. So what happens is that I will increase the concentration. So for the first one, concentration will become 1 molar. And for when the rate is 2, the concentration of A will double to 2 molar. 1, 1 molar. Rate 2, it means that the concentration increase. So, for the zero order reaction, so for example here, for the first uh, reaction, if the concentration is 1, what I will get is K. Because uh, 1 to the power of 0 is uh, 1, so it will become K. So, how about if we increase the concentration? So, for the second experiment, we increase the concentration. 
uh, the rate is still k. So here we mentioned that doubling a does not uh, have any effect on the rate of reaction because when we double it, uh, the rate of reaction is still k. So the doubling a does not have any effect on the rate of reaction. Okay, so how about if it's first order reaction? Okay, so first one, uh, for the first rate, uh, the concentration is one, but for the second rate, concentration will become two. So what will be the rate? So for the rate one, it will become k, and then for the rate two, it will become two k. So what happened here is that uh, the doubling the concentration of our reactant will increase the reaction by a factor of 2 because it's from k to become 2k. Okay, how about the second order? So, again, grade 1 is when the concentration is 1. Grade 2 is when we double the concentration. So, for example here, grade 1, we have k. Grade 2, we will have 4k. So, as we can see, the doubling the concentration will increase the rate of reaction by a factor of 4. Okay. So no worries, uh, if you were unsure, later on we're going to do some of the exercise, the exercise or the example uh, where we do the past here together. Okay, next is actually, what we're going to look at is the unit of rate constant. So here, K. For each of the order of the reaction, we, we will have different unit of K. So before that, it depends on here lah, rate is equal to KAX. So what is rate? Rate is actually, okay, uh, rate is, uh, we have learned at the first, of, at the start of the chapter itself. Rate is the change in concentration divided by time. So time it could be second, day, hour, minute. So here I'm just going to write down time only. So here, based upon our zero order reaction, so we know that rate is equal to K. Rate is equal to K. And then we know that the rate itself is uh, molar per time. So we know that. That is the unit of our K. So this is unit of K for our zero order reaction. So remember that this time can uh, be happening. Could be second, minute, day, hour. Okay. So that is for zero order reaction. Okay. So let's look if it's um, first order reaction. Okay. So read is equal to, but then here we know that read is equal to k e okay so rate we know that it is molar per time so here k and the unit of concentration square bracket ni means concentration so it is molarity so molarity ni uh, the unit of it is m so k will become molar per time divided by m so when we divide it what we will have K will become per time. So the unit of rate constant for the first order will become per time. Okay, so how about if it is a second order? So I'm just going to substitute it again. So we get here, remember K is concentration of A to the power of 2. So it means that concentration is the M squared. Right now, so how about K? So when we simplify it, here we cancel out, here we become 1. So the unit for K here is per molar per time. So here, per molar per time. Okay, so from here, we know that for each of the order of direction, we will have different uh, rate constant. Okay, so for the unit of rate constant, uh, we don't have to memorize, it's just, a, it's just that you have to start from zero where rate is equal to K or rate equal to our rate law itself. Then you're going to substitute the unit itself. So you can get it strictly. Okay, now it's where you have to memorize all the formula. Okay, so this is actually the integrated read law. So actually, how do we get here? It's actually the said integration steps. But then you don't have, uh, but then you don't have to memorize it. What you have to memorize is actually the formula and how to use the formula itself. Okay, so we look here from the for the zero or direction. So a not me, a not me. It means that the initial when time is equal to zero. Okay, the initial one minus uh, the current concentration. So, for example, if our time here is 50 seconds, so it means that the this is the concentration at 50 seconds. K is our rate constant. Remember that unit of K is uh, for zero order molar per time. 
In time, it depends on the question lah. If we need second ke, minute ke. So, that is for zero order. Okay. For the first order, it's similar as uh, zero order. It's just that at the start here, you have to include ln. Okay. Ln A0 minus ln AP. So, um, just to remind you, so, of course, like, initially, it must be a bigger value than the current concentration. Uh, so, that's why, lah, we initial minus our current concentration. Okay. For the concentration itself, so, for example, because this uh, equation that I give you, my concentration is E. So, that's why I put e here E. So, for example, if, uh, based upon the equation, uh, based on this question itself, if the reactant is O2, so you have to write down A ni, you have to change it to O2. And can't write down E lah. Okay. So that is for zero the first order. But for the second order, okay, the same here is equal to Kt, but then 1 over here will become the, cu the current concentration minus the initial, 1 over initial. Ah, so here, not only it is a fraction, but then we have to change the position of current and the uh, with the initial one. So that is for zero, first, second. Okay, that is for the integrated rate equation. Okay, for the half-life. Okay, so based on our linear outcome, we have to define what is half-life. Half-life is the time required for the concentration of reactant to be decrease to half of its initial concentration. So here, it's actually when we're going to do our t uh, we're going to halve it. So uh, it's not from uh, showing you how to write it down. So here is the formula. For the zero order, uh, half-life is equal to uh, ayam ada dua kaki. Ayam bahagi dua kaki. For the first order, long to over key. I uh, do not know lah how to... Ni tapi yang long to over key. Okay, tapi kalau second order, half-life is equal to one over kaki ayam. Okay, remember that this is actually... Uh, for the first order, does not depend on the... Uh, initial concentration, uh, yang zero order, ayam ada dua kaki. Uh, second order, uh, satu bahagi kaki ayam. Okay, so that is the equation. Uh, but then, we're still, not, we're still not finished yet. Ada lagi, skip lagi. What we're going to do next is graph of concentration versus time. This is a first order, eh, this is a zero order, first order, second order. Okay. So, for graph of uh, concentration versus time, linear graph method, it must follow the y equal to mx plus c. So, even though this is the integrated equation, we're going to arrange it to become y equal to mx plus c. So, here, y equal to mx plus c. So, the initial will, be, will become the y-intercept. y-axis is the concentration itself. Uh, x will become the time. Okay, and then for the zero order reaction, as we can see here, it, it has negative here. So, what we call it has a negative slope. So, our gradient is actually our rate constant. So, uh, the same goes as our first order, but then the difference is it's actually ln A. Uh, make sure the, uh, the x axis is still time, it's just that y has to change it into ln A. And uh, then we're going to look at a few of the examples. So I'm going to change it. So if the question asks you to uh, do the linear graph method, so for example, for zero order, you can use it straight away lah if it's given to you concentration against time. If the question gives you concentration against time, information by concentrations against time, but they ask you to do the linear graph method for the first order, uh, we have to change your know, concentration to all become ln A dulu. Then we're going to plot it. And then for um, second order, y equal to mx plus c. Then we arrange it here. In this case, our uh, mx is a positive slope because here positive kt plus 1 over, uh, one over a naught is actually our uh, y-intercept. Okay, so that is the linear graph method. Okay, so this is actually how we're going to get the uh, proportional, uh, increasing proportionally uh, for our graph. Okay, and then this is a graph of rate versus E. Okay, here because we know rate does not depend for the zero order, rate does not depend on the concentration. So that's why we got this straight line. For first order, we know that it depends on the first power lah, raised to the first power, so increasing here. 
But then, uh, if read is equal to k e to the power of 2, increasing, uh, here it mentioned that depends on the concentration of rectum raised to the second power. So here we get exponent of graph. Last but not least, what we're going to look at is actually graph of concentration versus time. Okay, actually, we can determine the um, order of reaction by using half-life method. So, what we're going to do is actually, for a given when t is equal to 0, it gives you a concentration there 1, kan? Okay, so half-life, first half-life 0 0.5, second half-life 0 0.25. Okay, so that is actually how you do the first half-life and second half-life. Okay, so, um, tips for you. If it's a zero order reaction, uh, zero order reaction is a straight line. Okay, so, senang saja. If it's a straight line, hence it will be a zero order reaction. But, for the first and the second order reaction, uh, it is uh, it is not a straight line. So, here we have to determine lah the value. Okay, so for the first order, so for example, is if the first half-life is 25 and the second of half-life is 25, where the first half-life is equal to second half-life, so it will become first order, uh, second order reaction. For example here, the first order is 25, second order is 50, when we double it, so this is actually our second order, second order. Uh, I'm just going to write down first order, same half-life, okay, call it zero order, okay, zero order, sini, uh, straight line, it's a straight line, hence it will be zero order, okay, so, that's it, uh, it's quite a lot because it is introduction of our rate, uh, order of reaction. Later on, we're going to look at the examples.